Welcome everyone. I'm so glad you could join us for today's tech topic or tech topic, steam time topic. We are going to be talking about a garden in a jar today. So you might be wondering what is a garden in a jar? Well, we might call it a jararium, but we will go into the definitions here in just a moment. What we're going to do today is we're going to kind of talk about the some of the words that I'm using, some of the key uh, lessons we're going to take away from this. Then we're going to kind of look at some examples of terrariums or gardens in a jar. And then we'll go through our step by step activity. So if you have any trouble following along during the activity, just remember we always post these on our YouTube channel after the program. You can find us at youtube.com slash Tampa Hills Lib. That's Tampa H I L L S. L I B. Uh, we've got all of our programs on there, so check those out. But I'll also be dropping a link to our handout in the chat here on the application. You can download that handout anytime. And we will hope that you follow along and then try the activity at home. So I've just added that link for you. And without further ado, Let's get going. My name is Lisa. I'm with the Tampa Hills for our County Public Library, and we are going to look at our garden in a jar. Uh, first, we need to talk about what our goals are. So, like I said, we're going to talk about the, the big words, the, the big key points that we're looking at today, and then we're going to go through the activity step by step to show you how you can do it at home. So, first word we're going to look, look at is ecosystem. So, what is that? Well, that's just a big word that means all the parts that you need to keep something alive, um, especially in a closed system like this one. So it it is an area or a zone or a container or a planet or a part of a planet that has all of those things that the creature needs to survive. Uh, you've got for most earthlings, we need some air and some water, uh, but some of us need some sunshine uh, like our little plant friends that we're going to put in our terrarium. So all those parts working together, the plants, the animals, the elements in the in the environment, all of those working together to make a place that we can survive. So a terrarium takes that idea of this bubble that we can live in and it makes it into a closed system a lot of times, or at least a containerized system where it takes that big, big idea of something living in its environment and it puts it into a smaller version of it that you can observe at home or in a lab or in a school. So if you think of an aquarium where fish might live, this is just like an aquarium where it has all the things that a fish might need to survive, but we're focusing more on plants with a terrarium, a terrestrial situation. So terra, earth, this is an earth ecosystem that we're looking at. All right, so remember, if you have any questions as we go along, go ahead and get those into our questions box. We will get to them during the Q&A at the end of the program. So if anything I talked about doesn't quite make sense, pop that question into there and we will definitely get to it before we end the program. All right, we've got our uh, we've got our big word examples out of the way. So I wanted to show you an example of a real terrarium. So this one was made by Mr. David Latimer in the UK, and he has hit, has had his terrarium going since the spring of 1960. That's a very long time to have all of that stuff growing and thriving in his jararium. Um, he said he's only opened it once at some point in the early 1970s to add just a little bit more water. He says it was not quite enough water for the plants to do as well as he wanted. So he just sprinkled a little bit more in there, you know, about 10 years after he started it, sealed it back up and it's been growing since then. So I thought that was a very amazing one to share with you. Now that we've got our words out of the way, our definition set up, let's look at our supplies that we're gonna be using today. So to start with, you need a large mouth jar. So you're asking yourself, what's a large mouth jar? I've got a big mouth, blah, blah. well, all that means is a jar that's big enough that you can probably fit either all or most of your hand into it. 
that'll just make it a lot easier to put the pieces that we're going to use today inside of the jar. Um, if you have something that's not quite got a large enough opening for you to reach into, you might have to use tweezers or chopsticks or something like that to, in order to put your plants in and really place them how you want, it, want them. Then we need some small pebbles. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. It can be just the, the kind that you find uh, on a playground or in your yard, uh, something smaller than maybe the tip of your finger. So something small that can let the, the water drain through, but maybe keep the dirt from going down into it. If you have extra aquarium gravel, that could be a great way to use that up if you have a little bit extra from setting up an aquarium. Or maybe you took down an aquarium that you changed the, the color of your gravel in your aquarium and you're not going to use that one anymore. You might be able to use it for your jarrarium. Then you want some soil. You have to have some dirt for the plants to grow in. You can use potting soil like you buy in the store to put in your pots for indoor plants. Uh, doesn't have to be anything like that though. You can just go out in your garden, dig a little, little bit of dirt up that way and use that. I would be careful if you're doing that. And first, you know, of course, make sure you have permission to dig in the garden. But anytime you're digging from the garden like that, you have the possibility that you're going to bring some bugs or some microorganisms in that soil into your closed system with you. Yeah. Out in the garden, it might not be a big deal because they have lots of room to eat and grow. But if they're in your very small closed system, they might eat and grow too much that your plants can't keep up. So just kind of think of that and maybe make sure that you're very careful with the soil that you're bringing in just to make sure that you're not bringing in too many critters. We do like some critters in our jar area, maybe some, some springtail friends in there to keep it healthy, but you just want to make sure you're, you're mindful of that. Now the supply list you'll see on there, it says that they use charcoal. So these instructions came from uh, World Book Kids and activity on there and they recommended using charcoal to help uh, filter and purify the water within that closed system. So I've put it on the list because they recommended it, but I'll tell you, I really don't think it's very necessary. I've seen lots of uh, terrarium setups, and I doubt Mr. Latimer in the UK had a charcoal in his uh, terrarium. It's not really necessary, so if you're just wanting to try this out, and you don't have a, an aquarium filter or charcoal that you can use available, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I definitely recommend trying it without first and then maybe using it the next time around if you find you really do need it. Water, so I don't think you need a lot of water for this. Remember, it's gonna be in a closed system. So if it's too soggy in there, it might grow fungus or molds that got brought in with the soil, or it might just be too soggy for the plants to survive. So really what you wanna do is your soil that you're using, just make sure that it's a little bit damp. So just a little damp to the touch. And that's usually enough just to get you started. You can always leave it set up that way and see how it does. And maybe add a little bit of water, you know, a couple of days down the line if you notice that, there, that it just looks a little bit too dry inside. If you do that, just sprinkle a tiny bit on there. Maybe use a spray bottle if you have a clean spray bottle, but don't add a ton of it. If you see water pooling in the bottom where there's like a little puddle under your gravel, that's probably too much. And of course, you need some plants to go in there. Now, this is going to be going into a terrarium. It's a closed environment. We're going to be seeing different parts of the water cycle coming into play here. I'm sure a lot of you might have learned about the water cycle in school. So this is definitely going to give you some examples of that. So with these plants, you want to be careful because you don't want them to get super big. If they get too big too quickly, then they won't have enough to support them inside of the jar. So you want ones that are kind of almost like a weed where they grow really easily, but they don't grow very big. So I'll show you some of the examples that I found around my house and garden, and we'll get started with those. And do you remember when you're picking your plants out, you can either buy plants from, from a garden store. Some of them will even have a section of plants that are especially meant to be used in a terrarium. But you can also gather up plants that you might have as house plants at home or in your garden. Again, just make sure that you have permission before you take those. And then your long tweezers or your uh, 
fabric or anything like that to keep that barrier between the dirt and the rocks. Those are all optional, but they might be handy depending on what materials you're using. So all that out of the way, I'm going to turn off this camera that I'm looking at and we'll go over to my other camera and we will start assembling. Okay, so we have an example here of a couple of jars that I had at home. Now, this one is one of my favorite jars that I have in my pantry. It's just a peanut butter glass jar, but it is nice and wide. So it's easy, or mostly easy, to get my hand in there. You know, if I had uh, kid size hands, it would be even easier. But I can get my hand in there and it'll be easy to assemble it. So this is an easy one to use. But I found that I had this in the back of my cupboard. And I think I'm going to use this one because it has a glass top, which will let even more sunlight in. So I think I'm going to try this out and see how it works. And it'll be able to be sealed up but I can reach in there too easily, get things assembled. So remember first we were starting with our rocks and gravel. So I grabbed some of that out of the yard. I had a little bucket there that I was using for potting plants. So I'm gonna start. By adding in that layer of gravel. So you'll see that that only gives me just a little bit at the bottom. I think I want a little bit more. When you're pouring, just remember to pour it slowly and towards the side. If you pour it from too high up, you might crack your glass if you're pouring it in there too hard. So there we go. All right, so that gives us about two inches at the bottom. I probably could have done a little bit less, but I just really like the way it looks in the jar. So I am going to kind of smush that down just a little bit and make it a little bit more even. And then these rocks I will keep to the side. I might sprinkle some of them on top just because they're pretty. And now I've got some potting soil that I had. I was repotting some plants this weekend and I had some of the stuff left that was already mixed up. So it's just random. Random potting soil. It's got a little bit of coconut fiber in there too. So this is just regular like plant potting soil mixed in with some generic old dirt that I had laying around. I'm using a little plastic fork here. You can use whatever you like. You can use your fingers to pour it in or you can use something if you have maybe a little small uh, shovel or something. I just like to use these because they're easy for me to hold. And if it gets too yucky and I don't want to clean it, this is something that I can throw away. So let's get started adding in our dirt. So you'll see that it's mostly dry, but has some damp spots. I did have a little bit of water in it because when I'm potting plants, I always start with a little bit slightly damp soil. So just damp enough that it's not wet where it's soaking in the bottom, but when you touch it, you can tell that it's not dry. So I'm gonna, this is a little bit more compacted down the bottom, so I'm just gonna stir it up a little bit more. So right now we are about just shy of the halfway mark, so I just want a little tiny bit more. And I think that's going to call it good for dirt. I'm just going to use my fingers to push it down just a little bit. I don't want to smash it down. If you smash it down really hard, it's going to be too compact. And then the roots will have a hard time growing. But if we just pat it down just a little bit, that'll give us enough. So th these are our layers. We've got our gravel down the bottom and our dirt on top. Now, if you're using a mesh or a coffee filter or something in between the layers, you would just cut them to the same size as your jar 
you can just trace that on there around the circumference. And then you would just lay that on top of the gravel before you add in the dirt. But I like to do mine without, so I'm going to leave it like that. So let me show you some of the plants that I have that we can add in here. See, I've got my chopsticks ready to help me poke, in, poke it into the soil and get it growing. So these are just in a little wet paper towel. So when I pick them, I didn't want them to dry out. So I just put a little wet paper towel around them while I got ready for the program. So here I found some fun ferns. So ferns are nice and easy for anything like this because they really don't have a lot of uh, tough requirements, but they do like it humid. So got a little baby plant here that is hanging on by a root and a little bit bigger one here. So with these roots still attach, hopefully they will grow into this. So we can put that in. I have this little plant here. Now this one was growing in my aquarium. I have an aquarium with a lot of fish in it. And this one always likes to grow out of the top. So even though this normally grows in water, I know that it grows out of the top of the aquarium really well. So I thought maybe we could try it for this. And you see, it's just got little, let's see if you can see it on here. We've got little tiny root fibers all along here. So we'll just put that gently in the soil, put a little bit on top of it, and we'll see if it grows. You have an idea that it will just because it always likes to grow out of the top of the aquarium. So I thought maybe it would grow in soil as well. There we go. So I've just put it down in the jar. I'm just using my fingers to smush it just a little bit into the soil, just enough that those little root fibers are just barely covered. And I'll do the same thing with my fern. I'll put it down into here, into the jar. And I'll try to hold it where you can see it while I'm putting the roots in. So we've got the root fibers right here. And I'm just gonna pinch it here. And I'm going to very gently use these sticks to push it down into the soil. Do the same thing with this one. Make sure I have my roots down below. And then I'll use my chopsticks to just push it down into the soil. Maybe make a little bit of a hole with it in first. There we go. I feel like as soon as I start pushing it in, I start pulling it back out accidentally. So I need to be a little bit more careful with that. So I don't pull it back out. There we go. And I have these little thingies. I have no idea what they are, but I know that they like to grow out of the top of the aquarium too. So we'll see if those might like to be in a little bit of dirt. See how they grow. And then I have a little bit of moss. Now this moss will hopefully help with the water in there. Hopefully that'll help keep moisture in there. I know it tends to do pretty good for this kind of a thing. Um, again, that's just something else that I pulled out of a, an aquarium that had some extra to spare. There we go. Okay, so now I've got my plants down in there and I'm just going to sprinkle just a little bit more dirt on top just to make sure that those roots have a little bit on top of them. Okay. 
and voila now can you see down inside of there we've got our dirt and our plants and our gravel layer and hopefully if all goes well we'll put this in a window that has a little bit of sunshine but not so much that it gets direct sunshine so you want light but not with the light right on it and hopefully we'll see you know, as the water down here gets pulled up by the plants the plants will use that to grow and as they breathe in and out hopefully we we'll see some of that water condensing on the glass and trickling back down if you think it's starting to look too dry or the plants are maybe getting a little bit crispy you might want to move them to a different window and sprinkle just a tiny little bit of water in there just you know, maybe a couple of teaspoons at a time just to make it a, give it a little bit of water or a little spritz but not enough if you see water in the bottom here under the gravel if you see it puddling up down there it's probably a little bit too much water so if that happens it's not a big deal just leave the lid open for a couple of days until you see that water mostly gone where you maybe just have a tiny bit left in the bottom close it back up at that point and then you should be good to go all right get this camera back on here and get get our screen back up there we go all right so what do you think if you have any questions you can pop those into the questions box on the go to webinar and we will go to our next slide so want to make sure that you had some fun books to check out that you could use when you're setting up your your own terrarium or jararium. So we've got our beginner's guide to terrarium gardening. This one's gonna be really good. It's gonna give you a breakdown of the different types of things that you can put in there, the different layers that you might use and the different types of containers that you might use. And also has some really fun, interesting ideas for how to make a terrarium with maybe plants that aren't normally or that you might not think of using in a, in a terrarium. So try that out um, and then we have a family guide to terrariums this one's uh, geared a little bit more for kids to get started on it and for the whole family to make together but it gives some really nice simple steps to build your own mini ecosystem so kind of like we did today so check those out hcplc.org slash ebooks has all of our ebooks these are both available on Hoopla and you guys know that Hoopla is one of my favorites because if I find it on Hoopla, I don't have to wait. I can just check it out right away. So check out those books, the Ter Beginner's Guide to Terrarium Garden Gardening and a Family Guide to, to Terrariums. There we go. So let me know what your questions are. Hope you've been typing them in. I'll check over that box there. But uh, while we're getting that taken care of, uh, let, I'll let you know about our next upcoming STEAM times. So our next one coming up is book binding on Tuesday, April 11th. That's also going to be at 6 p.m. So we're going to make our own little book binding project. Uh, that'll be extra fun. We have uh, we'll have all the instructions with that one as well. Um, after that, we're having a super sciencey one to get ready for summer and preparedness. We're making our own DIY barometer. So barometer is a tool that we use in a lot of weather science, but we especially are interested in Florida when we do hurricane tracking. So we'll learn how to build our own barometer at home to kind of follow that along and learn about that activity. And then at the end of May, uh, you might remember we've done a program on Fiero code before where we gave you that brief introduction on how to get logged in and what it is since it's a, a newer thing that we have. Um, but we're going to go more in depth and show you how that works. We're gonna have a project set up that you can use. There we go, now you can see it. All right, so yeah, definitely check out those upcoming programs. I'm gonna pop into our questions box here and see what y'all are asking. So I see we have a question here on on their jars. Okay, so they have a plastic jar, they don't have a glass jar. So you can definitely try this out with a plastic jar, just make sure it's clear all the way around the sides. Um, 
But the, the reason we tend to not use plastic jars for this kind of thing as often is that the plastic, well, really, it tends to get cloudy or scratchy really easy. And that means that you can't really see inside as well after a little while. And it also kind of breaks down where it might end up getting a little bit leaky and not be sealed quite as nicely. So you can, you can definitely use this as a starter to get your project going. If you want to try out a, a smaller jararium like this, you can use a plastic jar. But if you're wanting to do this where it really lasts a longer time, like Mr. Latimer has his ginormous one that he's had, uh, you're really going to want to use a glass jar. That'll uh, last a lot longer and it'll be easier to keep it clean and to enjoy it down the road. So, yep, you can use a plastic, but I would really recommend using a glass one if you if you can find a good uh, glass recycle jar. Okay, we had somebody else asking about the uh, about the filtration. So yeah, it, the instructions have in there that that you should use it. I really don't think that it's the the charcoal. I really don't think it's 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 as helpful as as they're saying in the instructions. It wouldn't hurt to use it. So the way you would use it if you were using uh, the charcoal filtration is that you would use um, the easiest way to do it is if you have an aquarium filter that you cut that open and take the carbon or the the charcoal out of that. Sometimes some stores also sell loose charcoal for filtration where you can use, just shake that into there. And you would just rinse it really, really well before you put it in because the charcoal is gonna have a really fine black dust to it. Um, and as that as the water gets through that, it's gonna get down the bottom of your gravel. It just doesn't look as nice. It won't hurt anything, but it just doesn't look quite as nice. So if you're gonna use the charcoal, just make sure you rinse it really, really well. Um, put that on top of your layer of rocks before you put in your soil. And with that, you really might want to consider putting in a, a layer of screen or mesh or landscape fabric between your, your soil and then the charcoal and the, the gravel. So, yep, you can definitely do that if you want to, but I really don't think it, it's needed. Yes. So we're asking where, where I found those instructions again. So. Those were uh, from the World Book Kids online. You go to hcplc.org slash kids. It's gonna be right there for you. Click in and you'll click on activities. And then from activities, you'll go to craft room. That has a bunch of different projects in there. You'll see some familiar ones on there. Uh, they have their own set of instructions that you can print out to do the activity. Or you can check out my instructions at, um, there's a link in the chat box here. and. If you're following along from our YouTube channel, we will have a link posted below that you can click on to download that handout. All right, that wraps up our questions. Great, thank you. Those were good questions and I hope your projects turn out great. I can't wait to see them. If you'd like to share them with us, we would love to see them. But if you have questions about this program or any of our other programs, you can reach out to us at hcplc.org slash contact or call us at 813-273-3652. If you're looking for more of our programs, hcplc.org slash events has always all of our events on it. And spoiler alert, summer is almost here. We are going to have so much fun in our branches this summer for you. So can't wait to share that schedule with you. It's not on the website yet, but keep an eye on the, the library homepage. We'll have that summer splash on there soon and keep an eye on our events calendar. We also have some more uh, children's theater performances coming up in branches, so keep an eye out for that. So yes, we hope to see you in our branches soon and in our virtual programs. And we'll see you next time, folks. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye friends.